My name is Jonathan Van Dam. Uh, I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan, born and raised. Uh, grew up fishing the Great Lakes uh, with my dad, uh, Randy. He owns a sporting goods store over in, in Kalamazoo. Uh, so I grew up working there. Uh, you know, I'm fishing for smallmouth my whole life, and, and that's one thing that I get asked all the time uh, because it's, for me, it's just second nature. You know, everyone always asks how you know, someone like myself or, uh, or my uncle Kevin, how we understand smallmouth bass so easily. Well, we grew up doing it, you know, when, it's, when that's what you grew up doing, it's what you, what you learn, what you know. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today, understanding smallmouth bass movements. Um, and this is probably one of the worst PowerPoints you'll ever see because uh, I'm not too handy with the PowerPoint, to be honest with you. I may be younger, but it's, it's definitely something to get better with. Uh, the one thing that I, can tell you that I've learned time and time again, the only thing you can count on with a smallmouth bass is that you can't count on them. Uh, these fish move a lot. Uh, they change habits in an hour, you know, all, you know, almost by the minute. So it's a uh, fish when you're specifically targeting them, you have to be able to adjust on the fly. You wanna be able to change your colors, change your presentation tactics. You might be catching them on a crankbait one minute and all of a sudden something will change real quick then you have to switch to a drop shot. So it, it's something you wanna make sure you're able to do quickly and, and make those adjustments uh, at the proper time. And the fish will tell you, you know, what they want. They're, they're not shy by any means. <clears throat> uh, movements of, of smallmouth, I'm gonna kind of break it down for the, you know, every, every movement that, that you'll see uh, you know, of, of a normal season. First off, uh, springtime, uh, you know, what to look for for pre-spawn fish. And I've spent a lot of time, uh, this is my favorite time of year to, to go uh, target smallmouth specifically. Uh, you catch them on a number of, of different ways, which I'll, I'll cover here in a little bit. Um, but the pre-spawn fish, they typically what you wanna look for is breaks, uh, you know, in structure flats, near spawning flats. Uh, you know, smallmouth are a little bit different than your typical, you know, large mouth or something. They, they spawn in different places. Uh, they spawn a lot deeper. I've caught them as deep as 25 foot, uh, you know, off beds. Uh, typically, 5 to 10 foot is going to be kind of the target area, but a lot of the areas, uh, you know, Traverse City is one of my favorite places to fish. Um, you know, even Lake St. Clair, they get out there into, you know, 15, 16, uh, you know, out to 20 foot in a lot of places. Uh, and they, they spawn typically in places you're not used to. They'll spawn out in the main lake. They have no problem with that. They'll spawn out in current. Uh, you know, they'll find something to tuck behind, uh, you know, to, to be able to make a bed, and it doesn't take much. Uh, you know, gravel bars and flats are typically your best area to look. Anything that has, you know, scattered big boulders or just uh, scattered trees, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, just something submerged that they can sit behind and make a bed. You know, they, they don't get picky. I've caught them up around docks, uh, you know, all over the place. So. It's one of those fish that they're kind of hard, you know, they're kind of hard to predict. Um, but once you kind of get the habit of what to look for and what they're going for, you know, that's when it makes it a little bit easier. Post-spawn fish, once they're, once they're done spawning, uh, they, a lot of them remain shallow. And, and you look for different things. And, and a lot of people think that smallmouth, as soon as they're done spawning, they just go out to the abyss. And, you know, you're going to catch them out there drop shotting in 35, 40 foot. You know, out, you know, deep, deep fishing techniques. Well, that's not the case at all. Um, a lot of fish and some of the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught have been post-spawn fish, and, and they've been in what I call transition areas. It's an area kind of in between the spawning areas and the deeper areas that they're moving out to in the summertime. 